thank Creative Capital and Ruby for this extraordinary weekend. Thank you. My name is Rai Russo Young, and I'm a filmmaker from New York City, and my project is called The Family Movie. It's a feature film with both documentary and fictional elements based on my life growing up with lesbian moms and my known sperm donor suing for visitation and paternity of me when I was nine years old. Big picture, the movie is about the domestication of the gay family and its struggle to leave the counterculture and enter the mainstream. So this is documentary footage of my two moms, my sister and I, on the beach when I was about three. In 1979, my mothers met and decided to have children. One of my moms had my sister using a known donor who was a gay man from California, and then my other mother had me uh, using a different known donor who was also a gay man from Northern California. My moms raised my sister and I in New York, and when my sister was about four, she began asking what a daddy was. My mothers told her that she and I didn't have a father, but we had men who helped make us. From the ages of three through nine, we would visit these men. It was a warm relationship, more like an uncle, though, than a father. <laughs> so this is uh, documentary footage of my sperm donor, Tom, with my sister and I on one of these visits. So within these visits, there was always a pressure from my moms for the donors to treat us both equally. So if I got lifted into the air, my sister also had to be lifted into the air. <laughs> my mothers didn't want biology to affect the donor relationship since biology didn't matter within our family. My sister was my real sister regardless of the fact that we're not technically biologically related. And for reasons that I can only speculate and don't really have time to go into right now, when I was nine years old, my donor, Tom, sued for me. It was a four-year-long court battle, which involved me having to defend and explain to lawyers, psychiatrists, to the judge himself, what I'd always taken for granted as my family. My whole reality was called into question, and we were in constant fear. Was I going to be taken away from my mothers and sisters and put on a plane to California? A man who volunteered his sperm to help a lesbian couple father a child decided he wanted to be more than a donor. He wanted to be a dad. And, and raised Sandra Russo and Robin Young began their family with the help of two men who acted as sperm donors. Those men, they say, were never meant no, to be part um, of the picture. This is the family, uh, Robin and I and our two children, and that's our family. And we have friends and we have other family that, that uh, we love and enjoy. At one point when the girls got older, they wanted to know who the men were who gave them life, and they went to meet them. All the other kids in school had fathers, and I didn't have a man in my life. And I just wanted to know. But like, then the man who helped give Rye life said he wanted to be a father to her, no, though no. the 11-year-old wants no part of him. I feel like he's just this man who's doing this, I don't know why, who's just attacking my family. The film will begin with early home video footage and then transition into a fiction film with actors playing the roles of my family members for the period of the trial. Rye is ages 9 through 12. The trial period is the bulk of the film, and the time period, 1990, the relationships and the characters will be replicated to reflect the real people and story. And woven into this fiction segment are questions of gender roles and sexuality that will emerge for Rai's character as she comes of age. We see the beginnings of her sexual development, from thinking she's a lesbian to becoming more comfortable in her own skin as she grows up. In a landmark decision, ta still taught in law schools today, Judge Edward Kaufman ruled that my sperm donor had no parental rights. My donor appealed, and the appellate division ruled in his favor, arguing that Tom was entitled to visitation and paternity of me. At this point, my mother's appealed, and Tom dropped the lawsuit. By 13, I was getting too old to be told what to do and to put on a plane to California. After the lawsuit, Rye gets a stack of videotapes delivered to her. She's had no contact with Tom outside of one court-ordered supervised visit. Tom is dying of AIDS, and he wanted her to have these tapes. Fictional Rye pops the VHS tape, and we transition seamlessly into the real tape. Hello, Rye. I'm making a movie for you. I figure that um, 
now that everything is over in the case and it looks like um, I'm not going to be seeing you, this may be my only chance to talk to you and tell you a little bit about who I am, where I live, um, what happened between us, and most of all, how much I love you. So, here's a movie for you, I After this point, the film will be primarily documentary. We'll see Ryan, her teens and 20s, as she comes of age as a sexual being in the world. You can see the condom on the floor there between my feet. Uh, this is my high school boyfriend and I on the New York City version of prom. Um, she's a young woman who identifies as straight sexually, but will always be a part of the gay culture in which she grew up. Big picture. Let's turn. Big picture. <laughs> The film will track Rye's emotional journey from being an innocent child full of imagination and curiosity to a hardened tween forced to dogmatically defend her family without room for ambiguity, and eventually to a woman coming to understand herself, her sexuality, and her ability to be emotionally open again. And with that openness comes an ability to explore the notion that she might have feelings for this man, not as a father, but as an icon of a man someone she'll never really be able to understand. I'd like to shoot the fiction segments of the film this year. I need cast, a producer, financing, and friends of the project from all disciplines that can offer advice and look at rough cuts and interact. I've made three fiction feature films, two of which were at Sundance, so I'm familiar with the process of making a movie, and my intention is that the film be picked up for distribution and play theatrically to a wide audience. And while this story is personal, it ends with the fictional Russo Young family on vacation on the beach in Provincetown circa 1994. We see life go on for them, and we pull back to realize that the beach is populated with gay families, still with young children, but that it's the beginning of the world as we know it today, and that this world will be a little easier for all these families because of what this family went through. Thank you.